evening, everyone, and welcome back to the London Dairy View. These are special editions of our show because we wanted to give all of the town candidates that are running for town office at our town election on March 10th, feels like it's right around the corner now, yeah. an opportunity to introduce themselves to you and kind of share their story and why they're so willing to run and serve our great community. So tonight we have Amy <laughs> Finnamore, and she's running for the school board with us. And uh, Amy, welcome, and we're so happy to have you with us. Welcome, glad yeah. you can make it Thank tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so why don't you start by telling us what, what sparked the idea of running for school board? Oh, uh, thank you, yes. Um, so I've lived in town here for almost 10 years. I have two children. I have one in Leap at Moose Hill, and I have another one in first grade um, at North School. And I'm, ac I'm running for school board because I actually, I care tremendously about equity and access mm -hmm. um, in higher education. I also care tremendously about equity and access in the K to 12 um, landscape as well and um, so in Londonderry in the town of Londonderry 12% of students across the district are eligible for um, are eligible for free or reduced lunch mm -hmm. so that means that um, these children are living in a household uh, where the family household is below a certain threshold so that they're mm -hmm. so they become eligible for free mm -hmm. reduced lunch um, across, um, so there's that. 12%? 12% said? of children. Oh, that's an eye opener for me. Yeah. I, didn't mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Um, so the recently the New Hampshire Department of Education um, worked with a nonprofit and um, that nonprofit it's called Reaching Higher New Hampshire mm -hmm. they um, they presented a lot of this data in a very interactive um, tableau uh, in a very interactive format um, it uses tableau it's this dashboard mm -hmm. and you can visualize data mm -hmm. in a very easy way um, so that was really nice because we were able to drill down to the district level and we were able to look at reading and math proficiency rates by student demographic. So students in Londonderry um, at the fourth grade, eighth grade, and eleventh grade levels that are eligible for free or reduced lunch have reading and math proficiency rates that are a fraction of the reading and math proficiency rates of their peers in the same grade that are not eligible for free or reduced wow. lunch. Mm. And oh. it's crazy how it can break it down so, like yeah. to those statistics. Yeah. It is. And the the reason that that really speaks to me mm. is because um, if the most effective strategy to combat intergenerational poverty mm -hmm. is access to higher education. Mm -hmm. And at fourth grade, we're seeing children already that are not, um, that are not meeting their benchmarks for reading and math mm -hmm. proficiency. Wow. And I, that's not acceptable to me. Mm -hmm. I want every single student to succeed mm -hmm. and I want all students to be able to, to grow and have the skills that they need to go to, to access higher education mm -hmm. and to be successful. Um, so it, uh, it, it is sad, but also the fact that we now have this data now empowers us mm -hmm. to, to, to intervene and make sure that at fourth grade, if these children need support services, that we now know, so we can now take action on this. Wow. We can make a change. We can. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I had no I idea. I had no idea. I'm almost yeah. embarrassed. I had no idea. It's I mean, across really. the entire state. Wow. It's across the entire so. state, but wow. also children, um, children, um, parental education levels and parental income is directly correlated with mm -hmm. the success of their children. And it's not, I don't want to live in a town, I don't want to live in a society where you, the, chi the ability of a child to succeed is dependent on yeah. what their parent, their parents' income. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I don't think Very it should well. be dependent on that no. at all. So what are, you, what are you proposing to do to help these students? I mean, is there mm -hmm. like a, a, a um, is there a way that they can get the free meals? So I'm, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, they're, so they're already getting free meals. Okay. Um, so these are parents that, these parents have spoken up and come to the school district and, mm -hmm. and, and now they're getting uh, free lunch during okay. the week. And then um, across the entire town, we also have something called 68 I'm Hours of Hunger. Um, so these, at, this, at the school level, teachers, the administrators on Friday afternoon are sending children home with a backpack full of food to make sure that they have food for the weekend. Wow. wow. It was kind of a grassroots program that was started yes. Where did here. that, yeah, where, and so it started the in the Well, it, it might be other places, but it was mm -hmm. a couple people in town. Am I right, Amy? Yeah. Yeah. Other, yeah. Just other a couple, states I've yeah. heard it in. Yes. Yes. Is there a place I've where people can that donate? Too. 
um, the Rotary made to quite a nice, sizable donation because wow. they presented okay. to them. So yes. um, uh, shout out to our Rotary for supporting yeah. it. Yeah. But it's so That's scary awesome. to think that there are children that go home and on the weekend because they don't have the hot meal at school, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they wouldn't have anything. And that yeah. affects yeah. their That's learning right. ability. Yeah. 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 It really drills That's down to every, it connects well, to everything. Think about yes. it. They're, they're their stomach is growling, and that's mm. what they're concentrating on, not their mm -hmm. homework, right. you know? Right. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Well, that's an awesome reason. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I applaud you for running. Thank that's you. That's very yeah. awesome. Thank you. Are there anything, is there anything specific that you want the voters of Londonderry to know um, in terms, I know you just said what your plan is to mm -hmm. kind of go forward, but anything else that pertains to you running that you would want the voters to know why you would be a good fit for the school board? What's your background, Amy? I yeah. forget. Like what? Oh, um, so I have a bachelor's degree in history. I have a master's degree in economic development, and I have another master's degree in higher education administration. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I higher work. Higher education is important. To you. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. I work as a program manager um, at a college in um, here in New Hampshire, and I work a lot on program evaluation. But I also work um, on something called um, effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So effectiveness is where you actually um, you look at the mission your mission statement of your university or the mission statement of the school district mm -hmm. and you say are we actually living up to this wow mm -hmm. do you that find more often than not that universities aren't living up to their that is a good question <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean like I, I, I'm not familiar with that uh -huh. but um, so it really depends on how um, how the university is is measuring itself yep. so mm -hmm. often um, in higher education mm -hmm. that you report out pretty standard metrics yeah. Yeah. that's really true across mm -hmm. I mean from mm -hmm. k-12 all the way up through education yeah. um, all the way up through higher education you're reporting on standard metrics yeah. those metrics generally don't tell you whether or not you're achieving your mission yeah. so then you need to actually say what what's our mission what are we trying to achieve here and what are the metrics or that what are the data points that will tell us if we're achieving that um, so in in the K to 12 space, what you can do is really, you know, look at your mission. Mm -hmm. You can look at enrollment. You can look at proficiency rates, and that mm -hmm. those are great. Those those are great. But we really want to say, when a student leaves Londonderry, the Londonderry school system, are they prepared to mm -hmm. to be successful? So the um, school district does have a college ready agenda. Um, they also the mission of the um, school district is to really make mm -hmm. sure that every student has the tools and the resources that they need. That's so are we achieving that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but um, I want to be on school board and really help help find the yeah. answer. My My personal and where you have you have a great background. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and where you have nice children in the school yes. district. Yes, I too. think that's important. That makes a, that's very important because yeah. you're seeing it firsthand based on your right. children's experience within the school district. And you're so. evaluating right. this already at the college level, so mm -hmm. then right. you can bring that to our school mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Very Thank cool. You. Very good. Yeah. Oh, and can, can go ahead. Yeah, yeah go for thing. it. Yeah. Um, oh, so one. So I have a student. Um, I have a student. I have a child. <laughs> <laughs> Who is a student? <laughs> Who is a student? <laughs> in first grade. Um, so today's second graders are in the class of uh, 2030. So my little first wow. grader is in the class of 2031. Oh, I also have another one that's in the class of 2033. <laughs> that's scary. Isn't it scary? Wow. Oh my God. So the jobs that they are going to be doing don't even exist today. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? I believe yeah. that. So now as a school system, I think I think our job as a town, as a school system, mm -hmm. is to, we don't know what tomorrow is. Okay. So how do we prepare students to succeed mm -hmm. in in a world that's it, that's ambiguous, in, mm -hmm. in a world mm -hmm. where you have to actually really go out and, and think creatively about problems. Mm -hmm. You have to evaluate a, a scenario or a situation, and you don't have all of the information. Mm -hmm. So where we're increasing automation every single day mm -hmm. um, and you mm -hmm. have to be able to really interact with automation in a way that is very informed so mm -hmm. I mean I, and also I l love coding um, yeah. so awesome. um, I would love you know I would love students to really uh, pursue those kind of er those fields but also you really need to be informed and say okay what is this data telling me mm -hmm. every job mm -hmm. whether it's a data job or not is going to need to have data literacy skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had somebody come into our office the other day who was inquiring about the tech school. So I know Londonderry High School mm -hmm. sends yeah. kids to the Manchester Tech Manchester, School. They do. Um, but he was talking about even bringing some of those courses here to the at the high school level, mm -hmm. and like 
offering those more hands-on, like those jobs that people can leave yes. the high school with, the knowledge that mm -hmm. might help them in higher education. Years ago, we used to have that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely. Yes. They, they used to have he was pretty passionate about, and I totally agreed with him too, about bringing that here. I mean, I went to Concord High School. We had a tech mm -hmm. school within yes. our high school. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily busting, but trying to figure out a program here that, that we can develop. implement within the high right. school that can be mm -hmm. developed for kids yeah, here. They, so if they want to get, you know, become a plumber, become right. an electrician. Yes, but like, same yeah. with that, like a specific coding class, or yeah, right. the mm -hmm. hairdressing school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Technical they do schools. need Is that, that something that you would agree yes. that London Dairy mm. might need more of? Absolutely. And um, just to speak to um, to the vocational skill, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the vocational craft around uh, uh, um, electrician or plumbing. Mm -hmm. If you're owning your own business as a plumber, mm -hmm. you need to know budgeting skills. You yep. need to know accounting. Yeah. Yeah. You need to know how to market yourself. Right. You need to be an effective communicator because you're it's going into people's homes. Right. Yes, oh, right. it's yeah. beyond just that actual right. skill. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I know that yeah. um, the yeah. vocational uh, the tech school offers a chance for college credits, I think. Yes, they Don't do. Don't quote me on that. Okay. No, they, definitely they do, do. and so yeah. that that's mm -hmm. also something that would be nice yeah. to have yeah. locally, to not just, it yes, right. to they advance have, it more. Yes. Have it locally here. I don't, yeah. I could be totally off. They could already have something like that, but if not, I think that's something that yeah, that's would yeah. be that's nice important. to be seen. Yeah. And that's very be important. Nice to be seen. Because so. there's a lot of kids out there that do not want to go to college. Right. They want to do a trade. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have the choice for that right. it kind of makes it very difficult yeah. everyone being college directed mm -hmm. instead right. of all these other phenomenal yeah. skills yeah. and yes. trades that are out there yeah. Yeah. yeah so Amy is there anything else you'd like to say to the the viewers the voters um, we're coming down on our time here so yeah um, so my name is Amy Finnamore and um, I'm running for school board so the elections are March 10th so um, you know just Please go out, um, get out and vote, and um, I would love and appreciate your vote. Well, very nice. Appreciate you coming you. on. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yes, um, very, it was, we, we learned a lot. Today. Yeah, yeah. We did. yeah. We definitely did. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. And now, thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. We'll we will break. be back with our next guest, yes. Ron so Dunn. Much. Welcome back to the London Dairy View, where we're interviewing candidates that are going to be on the ballot on March 10th. We have Ron Dunn, who's here with us. He is a candidate for town council. Ron, yes. welcome. Just welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank, well, you. thank you, ladies, for yeah, having me. Yeah. And uh, thank you, the viewers, for uh, tuning in to learn about us. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you want to learn about who I am and who the other candidates are. Um, I am not a politician. Um, <laughs> this is out of my comfort zone. Anybody that knows me will be surprised I'm on TV. <laughs> but, uh, I am very passionate about the issues that are going on in the town. and. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can help, um, so I, if I seem a little nervous, I am, <laughs> so I'll be honest. <laughs> um, so um, I'm a person that speaks from the heart, and I'm very passionate about the issues that I, that I speak about, so um, sometimes I tend to go on a little ramble, but I will try not to take, keep it simple. Well, <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> um, a little bit about me, um, I have a wife, Kara, who is my rock. She. Uh, uh, basically is supporting me, helping me through this, um, and kind of encouraged me to step up and, uh, and do this. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, if anyone has any, any questions for me personally or anything they want to ask me off the air, um, I leave my phone number, 781-640-1006. Um, anyone can feel free to call me at any time. Um, and I'm running because I love London Dairy. Me and my wife are very passionate. We love, love this town. And uh, I feel like I can help the town. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the big questions that I get is, you've never been a politician, you're new. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a benefit. Um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes some of the politicians get set in their ways and uh, they do this, oh, we used to do this 10 years ago this way. Yeah. And Same rhetoric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like I can bring new ideas, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a new fresh look at things, maybe a new way to look at something. And as far as getting up to speed, if I am elected, um, everything's on tape these days. Mm -hmm. So you can easily it look is. at past council right. meetings and see where we're at mm -hmm. and get up to speed. So I don't think there's any issue of uh, electing anybody that isn't currently on the council. It's pretty, it's, it's it education to get up it to is. speed. It's yeah. not, it's yeah. not right. that right. difficult. Um, the reason that I'm running is, um, the main reason I started to run is the PFAS issue. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into too much depth today, but my wife and I are very passionate about it. 
Um, my wife has some health issues, and she believes that some of the issues that she has are related mm -hmm. to that. And I feel like every time we meet people in town, they don't know about it. Um, my wife just went for a, a health check, and the doctor uh, lives in Merrimack. He didn't know about the PFAS issue going on in Merrimack. So mm -hmm. it's like every time we meet somebody, no matter what education or background they are, a lot of them don't know. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we can educate a lot of people. And so I feel like that's something that, that I can bring to the table. Like we started with the PFAS issue back in 2014, and we tried to get involved in the study that mm -hmm. they were doing in the town, and we were told that we weren't included in the study. Uh, and then in 2017, the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services contacted us and said we want to be part of this, part of the, um, part of the water testing. Mm -hmm. So we took part in it. They tested our water, and at that point, they said, "Well, you still don't qualify." Mm -hmm. But wow. so we just kept researching, kept them. after them. Good. And then in um, eight, uh, sorry, in uh, October 19th of uh, this past year, mm -hmm. um, they decided that we do were part of the study and they put us on bottled water. Good. So, um, for people out there that don't know your pets, that drink the water, you know, your pets are part of your family. I have three lovely dogs, <laughs> and uh, I have a great Dane who drinks about a half gallon of water a day, so they're very susceptible <laughs> also to this. Right. So, that's one of the things I feel like, as a town council, we need to kind of look out for our residents that either are too busy to pay attention to the news, or they um, are too involved in what they're doing, like to try to get them the message so that they know that their water needs to be tested also so that we can kind of maybe as a, as a council, as a town, stand up and say, we need to fix this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's one of my main issues as a person that affects me and my wife mm -hmm. daily. Um, and then the other main reason that I'm running is a lot of people have said to me that what happened to Londonderry, like the tax rate was always good. And mm -hmm. like our tax rate in 2018 was $21.80. Mm -hmm. But we lowered our tax rate in 2019 to 1939, so it looks good on paper. Mm -hmm. But we also raised all the valuations of the property. Mm -hmm. So as far as a town, our valuations went from $3.9 billion to $4.5 billion. Mm -hmm. And the person on fixed income, their tax rate, people I've talked to went up between $500 and $700, their taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's not a lot of money to some people, but to a fixed income person, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to see if there's something we can do to to impact that because we made the tax rate look good on paper mm -hmm. but for our average resident mm -hmm. their tax bill went up. Yep. Is that just the um, because I don't live here yeah. in Londonderry so does that include this, the school taxes because the school's taxes are what always goes up in where I live in Atkinson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see that yeah, on tax it's bills it's you know that's there are always me. more than the town side. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's, it's just the, the base tax rate per thousand mm -hmm. on the property taxes. Okay. So we just, I, I just feel like we, we kind of made it look good on paper. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we kind of, a lot of people on fixed incomes, we kind of, I don't want to price them out of the system, you know, price them right. out of the town. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, like we, we've yeah. talked to a lot of older people that are like, they're struggling to pay their property taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we have a very always, big elderly yeah. population and yeah. here yeah. too. So. London has had a good history of keeping the taxes kind of consistent, but mm -hmm. last year kind of like, Jumped a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the five-year so, assessment, that not right? Yeah. Assessment and is that a state five, mandated yeah. thing? State Sharing mandated. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so my understanding is now they'll go to every two years, so it won't be such a shock. shock yeah, 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 yeah. That would be, be nice. Yeah. But that nice. five years was pretty well. <laughs> <So> <laughs> well <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it is tough on people. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's and very. I mean, you live in town, so you know too. Yeah. You know, and then for our seniors, as you said earlier, our seniors that live in mobile home parks. Right. Right. Yeah. History it's a lot, it was a lot yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And absolutely. I think it's important that you're running on issues that you're so passionate about because they affect you too. Yes. So you're not just running because you're just running. Right. Yeah. It's nice right. that you're taking to the to the ballot um, things that you want to see change yes. that personally affect you. I think that makes a strong oh. candidate. Mm -hmm. so. well, thank you. Yes. 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 I'm hoping that I can do something you know for the town that'll be mm -hmm. beneficial. I feel like I bring fresh ideas. Um, you know, I've a little bit more about me is I, I grew up in Plymouth, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and I, I was here, I went to the University of New Hampshire, so I'm kind of a New Hampshire guy, mm -hmm. and then the economy wasn't so good in 94, mm -hmm. so I had to go to Boston to work. So I stayed in Boston for 17 years and uh, worked there, and mm -hmm. my wife and I said, well, it's time, <laughs> we're, we want to get back to, uh, yeah. <laughs> back to New nice Hampshire. Town, yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, w we came to Londonderry and, and uh, we love it here. Aww. So we want to stay here and uh, do what community. we can to improve the town. Nice. And uh, so I want to see what I can do to mm -hmm. uh, improve the situation. I think, you know, I, I bring a lot of new ideas and hopefully uh, people out there will get to know me. You can, like I said, you can give me a call, ask me personally. Um, I like to see new people mm. stepping up. It's yeah. nice. I mean, we yeah. talk about it a lot. We'd like to see new people for boards, right. committees, commissions, yeah. town council. It's nice to see people stepping up yeah. And, yeah. and trying to make a change and mm -hmm. voicing their opinions. With good and ideas. With good ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and, and that's what we need. We do need. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it becomes and that stale. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yep. becomes stale mm -hmm. after a while. It's like in anything. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's yeah, good, too, because, you know, you're researching already yeah you know yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you're going to find the facts mm -hmm. you're not just going to go on hearsay or spout out something that's mm -hmm. not true you know right. you're, you're you know mm -hmm. you're getting to the meat of it yes yeah that St. Cobain issue is and it, it is yes. shocking like a lot of people I mean we get calls on a daily basis of yeah. what is the town going to do and I know the council has talked about yeah. resolutions and they're really focusing on resolutions so I think that's why yep. it's such an important issue to run on as well because there is something that yeah. I know on March 2nd it's going to be brought up so yep. hopefully people yes, will come out I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get everyone that I know to come out to, to the town yes. council on March 2nd I think you know to bring up their issues be, yes, um, yeah. um, so we're, we're trying to communicate that to everybody like now we have an opportunity like it's on the book mm -hmm. it's on the books we're going to yeah. talk about mm -hmm. it so right. let's get out there and talk about it yeah. um, it's important you know. well, what do you do? Like, what, oh, yeah. so, What's your profession? Um, yes, so, that was yeah, the yeah, okay. question. So uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, re, a retail manager. I work for uh, CVS. Very nice. I've uh, nice. been a retail manager since 94. Wow. Um, not always with CVS, but um, so I work with a lot of different people too every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with all different personalities. Ethnics, mm -hmm. personalities. Um, a lot of elderly I work with because we had the prescriptions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. right. So I see a lot of different perspectives. I see a lot of things. So I think there's a lot of things through my history that I can bring to the table. And, um, you know, I, I just want to try to help the town improve. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, I think we're doing a lot of good things mm -hmm. and we can right. always do them better. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so hopefully, you know, a um, little bit, you know, uh, from what I do, I can transfer it onto the council. Yeah. And, uh, Your knowledge. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. And new and different blood is good. Yes. Yep. Yeah. New yep. and different blood. Yep. I mean, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after a while, you know, we need the new and yeah. blood mm -hmm. coming in. You know, and I also think that a three, you know, at some point, a three-year term, maybe at some point, like, it should be three years and then new people come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, you know, maybe, maybe, words, maybe, it, you mm -hmm. know, maybe it's, you know, I'm just saying, maybe it shouldn't always be you know, where people just keep getting yeah. on the council that we mm -hmm. get fresh blood all the time. But yeah. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that the people that are listening will uh, will come out and vote. And uh, yeah, yeah. Any closing vote. statements you want to make? Um, just that my name's Ron Dunn, and uh, I've I'm running because I love this town, and I would ask for your vote um, if you want to call me. I gave my number. Uh, you can call me. You can ask me any questions. I will um, answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll find out the information for you and get you the best answer that I, that I can. Um, I'm not going to tell you something that you want to hear. I'll tell you mm -hmm. the truth. <laughs> um, it's refreshing. So, um, but I will get you an answer and uh, I'm hoping that you'll give me a chance to uh, show what I can do. Um, I feel like we need some fresh ideas on the mm -hmm. council and uh, everybody should turn out either way to vote definitely, but should turn out to the second, to March 2nd to the meeting just to for the PFAS issue, but also on March 10th to vote. Perfect. Um, Thank you for saying that. You know, yeah. um, it's important to vote. Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's uh, sad because we never see the numbers that we hope to yeah, the voting. Only on yeah. the major yeah. elections yeah. 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 Right, is when yeah. we but, see yeah. but you know what? People don't understand that even issues that arise on that level start at the municipal oh, level. Right. right. And right. people don't take, they take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And then mm. we get complaints and it's, yeah. It's aggravating because then you you know people had a cha chance to change. Yeah, yeah. I think what hurts you know the towns here in the voting is everybody doesn't run at the same time, mm -hmm. so people mm. don't come out because because yeah. it's only a couple running this time and a couple where mm. like, like in present. cities and mm -hmm. different places. Everybody runs at the same time. Which is interesting. Mm. It, which is yeah. really, That's a good you point, know. Bonnie. Can we start yeah. with the town council it to really address? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. 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 It gave us another issue. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I think, I 
myself, you know, when I first moved here, I was like, what do you mean only these two are running now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then you next year, two more people are yeah. running. It was never like yeah. that. Right. You know, it was always everybody ran, that was it. And when their term was over, you know, everybody else wow. ran, right. you know, yeah. and it was, it was good like that. Yeah, that's right. Very yeah. issues yeah. to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts, all the other states. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Ron, we really appreciate you. Oh, being thank you for having me. We do appreciate yes, thank you. It's wonderful. Thank it's you for having me. Oh, thank you. Good luck. Oh, thank, thank you. Good luck on that. So, yeah. so thank Ron you. Dunn for the town council, and um, we will and be back shortly. Contact yeah. us. So yeah. thank you, Ron. Thank, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Welcome back, everyone. We have our next candidate, Deb Paul, who's running for town council. So welcome, Deb. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about why you're running. Um, I just feel that no candidate should have an open door to a seat. Mm -hmm. There should always be somebody running. Like there should always be a competition. It shouldn't just be a given that you're going to get the seat. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the reasons. The other reason, because I've been preaching that for many, many years, um, I'm very concerned about a few things that are going on in the town. For the last eight years, uh, myself and a couple other people have been very, very, very concerned about water issues in this town, and it fell upon a lot of deaf ears. Mm -hmm. um, we were asking for water plans. Mm -hmm. uh, then I found out about three years ago that we gave away our water rights. These things bother me deeply because I sincerely believe that in the next 20 to 25 years, all of central southern New Hampshire is going to have to be on um, town or city water and we don't have a plan and I am more of a proactive as opposed to a reactive person I think you should always try to get ahead of something and wrap your arms around it because this thing will is very is going to be financial hit in the face mm -hmm. it's going to cost a lot a lot of money mm -hmm. to make sure that we all in our town have clean and a lot and enough drinking water mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason why I stepped in. I also believe that, I've always said it, I believe in terms. Mm -hmm. uh, I put it on as a citizen's petition two years ago, I believe, on the ballot. Uh, it passed. People were, wanted it to happen. I think 1,400 people voted for looking into putting some sort of terms on some of the boards. Mm -hmm. um, yep, term limits. It yeah. didn't happen. It could have been a suggestion. We could have encouraged people to do it, maybe move over to another one, bring you what you have to another board. Yep, like um, moving up like from zoning board to planning board or. Right, because yeah. then you bring what you've yeah. learned at zoning to planning mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. from council mm -hmm. to, pl it, you just, it, yeah, to me, if you, if you want to stay involved, yeah. just move around. Don't yeah. stay on one and be stagnant with the mm -hmm. same mindset. Mm -hmm. Fresh eyes, fresh perspectives mm -hmm. are always the best. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I just think fully vetting everything bringing thing out, things out publicly mm -hmm. and having a deep conversation is the way to go because in that con dialogue, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. you're going to come up with a great idea. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't see a lot of that happening these days. Mm -hmm. I just see meetings running like machines. I don't see the dialogue. I don't see the conversation. It's just, you know, okay, move on. Okay, everybody vote. Yeah, okay. It's like, why even bother having meetings if that's the way it's going to run? Then mm -hmm. you should go in, open up a charter, and have a city, because that's the way you're operating with one set of, uh, it's mm -hmm. not, there's no, there's never anybody who is against anything. Mm -hmm. They're all, yes, that's a great idea, great idea, okay, good, here we go, move it forward. I just don't think things should so, work So are way. you gonna be the one that gets on and says, nope, er, yes, if everybody yeah. votes if yes, I don't you're gonna be the one that says if no. I, only <laughs> if I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. If I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I first moved here, I was going to run for state rep. And I went to uh, each party because mm -hmm. I didn't understand how it worked. And I, at that time, I was a registered independent. Went to each one. Democrats wouldn't have me, and the Republicans wouldn't have me, mm -hmm. both because I wouldn't vote party lines. Oh. It's not who I am. I, I vote my heart and what I think is right. And I will tell you why I think that. I welcome you telling me why I'm wrong thinking mm -hmm. that way and maybe <laughs> flipping me and maybe you will maybe and then you know Sherry could say something and flip me the other way but if you don't have that dialogue how are you even gonna know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know so how important. people think mm -hmm. so what other issues are 
important to you in regards to the town of Londonderry? Um, besides water, I'm concerned about um, traffic. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think I said this last year. We need to do a 150 look feet, foot look down at the at the at the roads and mm -hmm. see how we can have a better flow of traffic and what we can do proactively. Again, um, we did all this building and never looked at our traffic. When you build, you should have all your infrastructure in place prior to growing so fastly the way we grew. Yeah, it's wonderful we grew, that's great. But I think we grew too fast and our infrastructure never kept up with it. Um, I, there were a few other things that I think are very, very important and, and that is the safety of our community. I mean, we have a great fire, we have great police, mm -hmm. but that still doesn't stop the accidents that are mm -hmm. happening on a regular basis mm -hmm. in this town. So that's a, another issue that is of concern to me. That's a good issue too. Traffic control. Traffic mm -hmm. control is a very yeah, good issue. Yeah, we don't have it. I mean, we have a safety committee that meets what, once a quarter? Yeah, once a quarter. No, it should happen once a month and mm -hmm. it should be, those people should be going to the mm -hmm. town council and the planning board and reporting what they heard and I don't see that happening. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of communication between boards at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only way it's gonna happen. I mean, that's one of the, the things about being in the job that I'm in. I watch every single board for the last 20 years. Uh, so I know the history. I know a lot of the RSAs. I know the processes and procedures within the town. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking at all of the different boards and committees for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I have a great understanding of them, which I don't think a lot of other people would sit there mm -hmm. and wanna watch all of those. Mm -hmm. It's just not fun TV. No, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the TV you sit down with popcorn into. I mean, sometimes yeah. yes, but not most of the time. Not most just of the not time. It, it, it's more of a, sometimes it's like a soap opera. Mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of wish that sometimes more people would, though, so yeah. that more people yeah. would be informed of what's going on. Mm -hmm. so, so. I think part of it is, though, the reason is, is people, is, and this is another thing what I think is, is important that I do is, I break things down, because in the paper, you have to break things down to a basic mm -hmm. understanding. It's kind of like you always hear people talking acronyms, or they, oh, this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. Mm -hmm. People don't know that, and so all of a sudden, yeah. they f don't feel as smart, or they don't understand, mm -hmm. so they kind of go, oh, I'm gonna stay away, because I don't know really what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, is another thing that I tend to break things down to a basic level to understand. Yeah, it might be raw, but people are, oh, it's, you know, but that's the easiest way mm -hmm. to understand it. Mm -hmm. So speaking of your job, you're editor, right? For I am not the editor, no. You're not the editor? No, I am not. Okay. I am the publisher and owner, which is totally different. Okay, but totally you have different. put articles in the London Daily I Times, do not write right? any of the articles. I well, do not do, didn't nope, never wrote an article. You never wrote an article for the London Daily Times? I do not, I write my editorial, mm -hmm. and that's it. Just the editorial. Correct, okay. which is an so, opinion piece. All right, so, would that be like a conflict of interest? How do you, how do you, you know, if you're if you're on town council, you get voted to town council, mm -hmm. and you make opinions in an editorial, you you can't be biased, right? So, like, do you feel there'd be a conflict? Would you, would that be a difficult situation for you to be on town council and then have to report no. on things? Because a, I don't write the stories. B. I have to do that on a daily basis. I get phone calls from people telling me information and it's off the record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't use it. And mm -hmm. I can't say anything about it. So I do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I get information, pri pri prioritized information that cannot be used. Mm -hmm. So I, it happens all the time. Okay. Um, I don't see the conflict really in any way, shape or form. If the council says this is private information, it's private information. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. I have never, ever, ever violated that for anyone in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And there's been some information, mm -hmm. I can't tell you the dirt I know, but mm -hmm. then I would have to be an inquirer. Because, <laughs> oi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say, you know, it's Peyton Palacios. Yeah. It's not politics, it's personal mm -hmm. that I hear, and it's, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Can't say it's anything. It's a job. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah. Um, now I we're all curious. Yeah, now that. we're like, yeah. okay, then you have to tell us. <laughs> like, okay. really? um, I did, I liked um, your last writer. Um, I forget his Edan? name. Edan. Edan. Did oh, he make it back nice. okay? 
I yeah, he's in know. Israel. He's on TV. He's covering sports. We're in communications wow, all the time. That's cool. But was, we were his first uh, job here as an American citizen, and um, unfortunately, he had to go back to family yeah. issues. But yeah. he's yeah. coming back, so that's oh, good. Oh, good! Yay! Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. he was he was yeah. a nice, nice man. Yeah. Very nice man. So, anything else you want the voters to know about your campaign and running for town council? And um, well, we I will have a meet and greet um, on March first. Mm -hmm at um, Troy's Kitchen. It's from 8 a.m. to 10. Um, so I welcome people. It's not just me. Um, I've so far con confirmed that Ron will be there, uh, Bob Slater will be there, Amy will be there, a couple of the budget people mm -hmm. will be there. So they've all confirmed. So if you want to ask them questions or myself questions, mm -hmm. come on down. It's a nice opportunity. And Talk to us. Where's yeah. Troy's Kitchen? Oh, it's nice in the Shaw's. It's near Shaw's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's in the Shaw's. Oh, it's Shaw's. Shaw's. It's it's they, they have good food. It's they have very good food. Okay. It's very like mm. keto, healthy, bowls. friendly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, nice, nice place. It's a juice bar. Too. It is oh, a juice yeah. bar. They yeah. have very nice yeah. juices. And so he's a London Dairy boy, London Dairy mm -hmm. family. So I asked him, and I, I'm probably going to have two more meet and greets, probably one at the Stumble Inn, and I'm waiting to hear back from somebody else. But we're going to try to get out there as much as we can mm -hmm. and talk to as many people. Um, and it's nice that you're incorporating all of the candidates, too. Well, and why, why have 15 of them? I mean, people yeah. got to run around as yeah. it is. I mean, yeah. if we can all get together yeah, and be welcoming, spot, yeah. we, it might as well good. just be there. Yeah. That's um, a good idea. It's easier on the people, too, yeah. to, well, that's yeah. the, to that's see the all the people yeah. mm -hmm. than to have to go to all different ones. Yeah, that's This true. way they get to see the one they want to talk to and find yeah. things so out. It's a comfortable environment, too, just having everyone in right. one room. and. Yeah. It's good yeah. for the local business. It, it is. Mm -hmm. It is good for the local yep. business. Yeah, he's a he's a young business, and like I said, he's a young London Dairy boy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think he graduated with my son. Actually. Yeah, I was gonna say he's fairly young yeah. that I know of. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. He it's it's a with John. It's, it's a it's a great Matt. place. Matt graduated with John. Bonnie, yeah. you would love it. It's a good place. Yeah. I've healthy. heard it's good. Yes, very healthy. Very healthy, healthy stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> Something I need more of. <laughs> so, well, thank right. you for coming yeah, thank on, you too. So much. Thank you for coming on. And we're, it's, oh, it's exciting welcome. to have all the candidates on. Yeah, yeah. Get to know. yeah. I, I am sad that uh, on Mary's show, number one, I'm sad to see her go because yeah. that was a great show. Mm -hmm. And she did that, and that was really, oh, I hope somebody her. picks it up. Mm -hmm. um, I feel Stuck bad that, you know, we didn't have a full debate. It yep. ended up being Deb and Ted going back and forth because. Yeah. That's all there was. Yeah. Mm. So um, that was kind of sad, but it would have been good if it had been a, a full. More of a round table discussion. Well, yeah, if yeah. Ron and Joe were able to have attended. Oh, with all they, the other Yeah, candidates. there, was, yep, there yep. was just me and Ted, so. Yeah. You know what I like lo the way we're doing it, though, is it's just all positive to share why you're running, mm -hmm. what's going on, you mm -hmm. know, how many, how many years you've been in the community now? Oh, well, I'll be 26 I'm years oh, wow. in uh, wow. May. That's a long yeah. time. It is, and yeah. I've, I've had the paper 20 years, mm -hmm. and yeah. I've sat on a lot of boards. I was just talking to Al out there, and he was telling me he's on eight, but I'm on 12. Jesus, <laughs> only eight, Al? <laughs> I hope to slow down to eight, yeah. but I'm on 12. <laughs> oh, so, are you? Jeez. Yeah, 12 mm -hmm. different boards. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So. Well, thank, we appreciate yeah, you thank coming you. on and sharing your views. Thanks for and coming on. Boy. Yes, giving all the candidates an opportunity. And good luck. Well, yep. I appreciate Closing it. Also, when, when will... Um, this be airing? Airing's usually pretty uh, fast. It's pretty quick, I would say within the next week or so, because yeah. obviously we have to we give have viewers time enough time to mm -hmm. watch yeah. all the candidates. Right, because right. yeah. I knew there was some before. rule. Wasn't well, there Aaron a rule? Stops. That Every, all the other shows stop, is it a week before? Erin will tell us. Erin will tell Erin yeah. maybe can put that up along with these shows, because that's mm -hmm. true. It's at yeah. first, like the last 10 days or something mm -hmm. when they run. So maybe we can clarify that in between our kids. Because there is some ruling, yeah. I, I remember, and I, I kind of thought it was kind of unfair. I thought that they should have it out a little earlier mm -hmm. because it just seemed a short period of time yeah. that, that it Might was on. Yeah. And yeah. so for people who are new, mm -hmm. um, it gives them less air time because mm -hmm. the other guys are doing their meetings and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they're getting the air time, whereas yeah, right. the newer people really aren't and so and this will be posted on our uh london dairy view fa facebook page too so you'll be able to go on and share it as well as a youtube video yeah as well so yeah, and i've got it i usually oh, put it on my picture sorry yep. yeah. sorry we should probably well, say um thank you and yes <laughs> yeah, we get a picture too. and we'll be back with yeah. our next guest yes thank, thank, you. Well, thank, thank you we are back with our next candidate his name is alex yep and he's running for the budget committee 
and welcome. 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 Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And let us tell us, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Sure. So I've had the pleasure of being in Londonderry for about three years now. Oh, I'm sorry, five years. Mm -hmm. And I'm running for the three-year budget committee. And mm -hmm. I feel that this was an opportune time for me to run just because I've had I'm about a decade of financial um, and contract experience and I think that's something that perfectly lines up with what this position mm -hmm. uh, is mm -hmm. looking for. Mm -hmm. And another reason why I was running is because I too was shocked when I got my tax bill in the mail. <laughs> um, I just saw that it was an opportunity to potentially give voice to individuals who mm -hmm. um, are probably feeling some similar um, concern or questions that I felt. I felt that you know, I looked around and I realized that there's a lot of people in Londonary who have been here for far more years, decades, generations, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I know for myself and I, my wife and I, excuse me, um, it was quite a shock when we got what we got. So I can mm -hmm. only imagine what they were feeling when they got their um, reciprocal tax bill. And so I thought that it would be a good time to participate to um, speak on behalf of them. Um, mm -hmm. I would never say no for any particular thing, but I think mm -hmm. someone needs to take the time to ask the questions as to, what's being done from the budget committee, what's being done to sp you know, spend money for the town, the school. Um, I think someone just needs to ask the questions of are we doing everything we can as a taxpayer and as a community to um, properly vet the projects we're doing, to consider potential avenues of revenue for some project before we go right to the taxpayer, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so I think the wealth of experience that mm -hmm. I've had, having done sort of a financial analysis, analysis background, I'm looking at budgets, doing pricing, things of that sort for my previous stage or my current day job, um, I think it's something that I could definitely bring to the town and for the budget committee to apply those same skills, um, do so for the taxpayer and continue to make London area as great if not better as it's been, but to also be cognizant of where everyone's coming from and everyone's uh, wallet and budget, so to speak, <laughs> and make sure we're not spending too much or keeping things in check. That's awesome. Great, thank yes. you. Good. So what company, so you said you do this for a living, so give uh, us a little background information about the company you yes, work for. Yes, so not that, I would av not that I would advocate this formally, but I, <laughs> I have the pleasure of civil service. I work for the government, actually, on a federal nice. level. Okay, yeah. So financial analysis is something that I've done for over seven years now. And you're um, familiar with how it works within government, which is good. Yes, yep. yes. Um, I know much about bureaucracy for good <laughs> and bad. Um, <laughs> and as you know, I uh, like a joke because that's why I'm running for more government work yeah. <laughs> um, but it's something that you know I've always had the desire to give back to my community and um, that's something that I've done with working for my day job mm -hmm. um, working at defense contractors um, it's something I like to do in general as Sherry knows personally I like to dedicate and volunteer my time helping mm -hmm. out at the ballot boxes and that's I think it's wonderful. yeah we no, so and you're I'm familiar happy with the to, local government I'm too. happy mm -hmm. to help and I've known a lot of people uh, just in different facets with mm -hmm. the town so I'm always happy to help and uh, give back and contribute uh, while I can. Mm -hmm. So it's something like you mentioned that uh, yeah. my job has given me the opportunity to yeah. gain this awesome. experience and it's something that I think I'm dealing with large budgets and pricing and not just mm -hmm. things for mm -hmm. today but for years down the road it's something mm -hmm. that I believe um, it's an acquired skill set and mm -hmm. one that I can help out with. And our budget committee is pretty awesome because uh, as you know they're, they're an advisory board mm -hmm. and they work so well. I found find that they work so well with the town council in terms of advising like especially when we go for nonprofits, advising mm -hmm. this is how we're going to split mm -hmm. the nonprofits, and the council listens. So it's good to have a strong board with financial yeah. knowledge and background mm -hmm. yeah. experience, um, just to kind of yeah. you know advise the council because the council Absolutely. has so much on their plate as is. So it's nice to have this other advisory committee yes. and to kind of back them up. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, a lot of the government compliance stuff, that stuff that I dealt with, so. Mm -hmm. There tend to be quite a lot of regulations, as I'm sure people know in this day yeah. and age. Um, yeah. So it's something I'm well versed in, something I'm comfortable dealing with, uh, making sure we're in adherence. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a town procurement policy, mm -hmm. things like that are yeah. things that I've worked with. And I think uh, that's why. It's nice to have that experience yeah, too. So absolutely. It's, it's not necessarily so much of a learning process, and you could probably teach other members who aren't as familiar. And yeah, like, and you know, willing to learn and to help yeah. out also. I mean, yeah. Not that I know all the answers, definitely yeah. far <laughs> from that, but I think, you know, there's a lot of give and take and something yes, that I'm happy absolutely. to share with yeah. and to learn from as well. Have you been, uh, had a chance to follow the budget process this past year? I have, and that's part of one of the reasons why I'm running. Um, <laughs> it's very confusing, and yep, I think for something that has such a profound impact on all of our lives, mm -hmm. for people mm -hmm. who are um, working with specific resources and budgets, I mean, I think it's a bit convoluted. And so one of the reasons why I'm interested in running is I think it might not ever change mm -hmm. um, how complicated or um, opaque or just difficult to understand it is, but I feel that the budget committee 
um, should do as much as it can to make people understand. And one of the things that I was interested in um, running on is being transparent. I think that in this day and age, um, for better and for worse, I think if you look at the current political climate, our president has been able to make great use of social media. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that the budget community could do, which mm -hmm. is maybe we post things once in a while on Twitter or yeah. we post some videos on YouTube so people can ask Big us, social media. how does the budget yeah. work, things yeah. of that yeah. sort. So I think the people who have worked for the budget committee have done a great job. I know it's a thankless mm -hmm. uh, challenge <laughs> each and every year. Um, and I think they've done a great job. And if I'm given that opportunity to serve alongside them, I think that's something that I like to do oh. is to I always contribute find, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. social media is to be very important in, now, in the day and age, yeah. today's day and age. Yeah. And as much as people can. I mean, even if it's going out there, I think, I know John Farrell and um, yep. Mr. Smith, our town manager, have yep. done so as well. Met with some yes. constituents. Yeah. I think if the budget committee, they have their budget workshops, but mm -hmm. anything more that we could do, uh, meet with people, hear their opinions, give them a direct avenue to mm -hmm. message uh, the budget committee it's nice or to hear just access ideas. that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's funny you say the whole ideas. social yeah. media thing yes. because um, our finance director, Justin Campo, I was um, posting some mm -hmm. notices for legal notices for town hearing, uh, public hearings that are happening at Monday's council meeting. and. His first instinct was to look to see if I posted them on Facebook first. <laughs> and he's like, I don't see them. And I was like, well, I posted them. Mm -hmm. And he's like, where? And I was like, on the website. He goes, oh, millennial, my first instinct. <laughs> and you know, That's we good. have a young wow. population here in town mm -hmm. too, who a lot of the London, Ar London Ar Moms page, like right. uh, people look to that before they even look at the website. And mm -hmm. I think it's important to have the different avenues to get the information That's out so there and not just cool. expect people to watch the meetings or look at the website. Right. And it's right. tough. I, I, I will profess, I was just mentioning with um, one of the individuals running Steve outside, mm -hmm. uh, only up until a few months ago that I realized that we had local access TV. As a oh. millennial, I, oh. I didn't go beyond the high that's okay. If stuff, I wasn't so here, I wouldn't know either. So you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think, you know, and not just for millennials, but oh, people of all great. ages. Yes, it's I important. I think having because YouTube videos yes. um, where people yeah. can explain it, because I think mastery of a subject mm -hmm. is you being able to explain it to anyone. So if there is that oh, there, I, I like think that. Like a Q&A even with yeah. budget committee members on YouTube. Or if yeah. you solicit uh, potential ideas from mm -hmm. people on Twitter, mm -hmm. we can respond to it in a video. Mm -hmm. But giving people that direct access and communication, I think that's something I think that's very important. Even if I don't win, Hopefully important. someone from the budget committee. But those <laughs> are fantastic <laughs> ideas. Definitely fantastic that. ideas. And I know yeah. some of the we have yeah. amazing committee members now too, and I know any of them would be very interested in implementing something. So like if that, not so. me, after a three yeah. elected officials <laughs> to do that, and I'm sure they'd be happy to sign you up and sign up for that. That's awesome. Oh, very and good. And we would be happy obviously to help at our level too, sure. to oh, oh, even to take your ideas. Great. Yeah. Or to have, if have them you are or not even. elected, yep, well, have if I don't win, so make sure those three budget yep. members. <laughs> Okay, I made mental notes, so I yeah. know what to do now. Um, so anything else you want to say in terms of why you're running? I know you've explained yeah, that I think well. uh, there's a lot of change going on in London area, and I think uh, looking around, I've been here, like I said, I've had the opportunity to live here in five years, and there's been a lot of change, a lot of development, a lot of new businesses moving in. I think it's an exciting time. It's an interesting time of change for London area. Yeah. I think to that, though, I think a lot of people, or at least I know myself, we look at all this new business development, and I wonder, well, if all these businesses are coming in here, mm -hmm. why are our tax rates, um, they're dropping, but our property values are going up and why are we paying more? Mm -hmm. um, I think there's an answer to that. I don't think it's been disseminated to as many people as it needs to have mm -hmm. been, but I think people are wondering, well, if all these businesses are moving here, mm -hmm. why are we still having to pay more for our public servants and for our public services? Because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, we put all this money from our home to paying our taxes and mm -hmm. You know, we're paying to pave the roads by the airport. We're looking to uh, you know, fix potholes by the mm -hmm, UPS yeah. building on the north side of town or deal with congestion on a high range yeah. road or mm -hmm. on all these different places. So I think the taxpayers, the residents who have lived here, we've really put up with a lot. I think it's something where um, the questions need to be asked of if we're giving all this, are we getting the reciprocal correct amount in return? And um, I'm sure there's an answer out there. I'm sure <laughs> the other uh, brighter individuals who are running could also answer it, especially those serving as well. But um, as someone who's never served on the town before, and I was curious to know, and I didn't look to see on YouTube whether or not there was an answer to that, but I can guarantee you if I do win, I could post that sort of answer that's for awesome. people. Yeah. I think that's something like that I've that heard many people uh, wonder about, and that's And honestly, I mean, if you win, um, that's awesome, but even yep. if you don't win, don't 
don't let that stop you from not doing that. Oh, absolutely. And I will, still, um, oh my I'll ask a bunch of folks to post yes, a few videos. Yes, yes, uh, yes. No matter what. Answer those questions for us. I think oh, that's, that's a good, very awesome. good idea. Very good. Oh, well, we're kind of getting ready to wrap it up okay. now. Yeah. So, any, any last? Um, yeah, I guess minute. I would say, um, you know, I'm happy to, you know, have been in this opportunity just to run. I appreciate mm -hmm. having the opportunity to, uh, you know, sit amongst you. I know all that you've contributed with the town over the past few years in this show. I think I saw that this show's been on for either two or four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. so congratulations to that. And, you know, I do Thank appreciate you. the time mm -hmm. and uh, the interest of people who watch the show and people yeah, who are you. cared about the community. So I would say um, for myself running for the three years of the budget committee, I just hope that uh, before people even consider giving me their vote that they'll give me their trust to do the right thing mm -hmm. for them in the town. And um, from that, I hope that they'll uh, vote for me and consider me to represent them. Wonderful. Well, thank Very you for good. coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. good luck. Oh, thank and you. we'll be back with our next candidate, yes. our last and final candidate. Welcome back to the Londonderry View. We have our final candidate of the evening, Steve Bro. Welcome. He's running for budget committee, and you are an incumbent member. Yes, I am. So, yes. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your experience on the budget committee, and why you're okay. running again. Great. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Yep. This Thank is great. You for being with us. Well, uh, again, what I want to do is, I believe I have uh, allotted 10 or 15 minutes here, and, and I want to start off by just uh, giving you a quick overview of what I'm going to cover, some mm -hmm. information about myself, uh, mm -hmm. my experience, and then why. The major question is why <laughs> the, the budget committee for three more years. Uh, so information about myself and my family, I would have to say, is, is a key date that I, I truly remember now, and it was the 17th uh, of this, this week. Uh, it happens to many of us. My wife, uh, we're having coffee in the morning, and I have my first sip of coffee, and my wife says to me, do you know what day it is today? And uh, I'm thinking, uh-oh, it's President's Day. It's, <laughs> we just had Valentine's Day. No, it's not her birthday. <laughs> I don't even have a second to respond. And she says, it's our anniversary. And oh, I was my like, goodness. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. So if, uh, if I lose the election here, I'm going to blame it because I forgot my wife's anniversary. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, so that, that date has uh, sticks with me. Is this your nice me. way of making up for it? It is, it is. I'm going to let her know. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and the worst part about it is a little magnet on, on our refrigerator it has the date on there and it's just completely uh -huh. I'm just gonna blame it on because I didn't have my coffee that uh, yes. I only had one yes. sip so I, I could give my time up that's yeah. right how many years and four, oh tw I'm sorry that's right that's 20, 20 that's the more important yes, that's 20, 24 years 20, 24 years that's yes. amazing yes. that's yes. awesome it's been great congratulations yes, yes thank you uh, so we have uh, again 24 years of Mary we have uh, Three, three daughters, uh, two are in college, and one's a senior in Londonderry High School. Nice. Uh, we've lived in Londonderry for just over uh, just over 12 years now. Wow. And it's a great town. I yes. love the uh, being able to spend the, some time out the outdoors on the weekends and going hiking and the musquash, and mm -hmm. I, that's, oh. that's my favorite on the weekends. Uh, experience, and so again, to talk a little bit about experience. Uh, some of my background is uh, obviously a, a strong financial background. Mm -hmm. I'm a CFO for a company in Concord. Uh, I, I'm involved in budgets and, and, and looking at expenses, it, it's, that's on a daily basis. And when I tell my kids, I have spreadsheets in front of me all day, and they're like, Dad, that's boring. <laughs> I know it's, no, it's, that's, that's, I enjoy it. That's, that's what I like doing is, is you know, having the spreadsheets and working through budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've, I do that, and I look at contracts, the number of contracts, and we go through that process. And, but most important, I find that it's the employees and the people. Mm -hmm. Be able to work with them and, uh, as a team mm -hmm. and making sure that we make a difference. Finding solutions to problems is, is what we, you know, that's, that's my main thing. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I just had a meeting today. We sat down with trying to figure out why, how to make things more efficient. Mm -hmm. And we sat down, put some brainstormed and, and figured out, you know, put together some processes and how to make some, make some changes. So that's, that's sort of my experience in, in finance. But then it also goes uh, even more than that. Uh, my experience in finance is a combination of, of, of financial background and education. I've, I've spent a lot of, like many of us, spent a lot of time you know, working all day and going to school at night, and I did that for many years. Uh, so I have a strong financial background, and, and uh, I studied for the CPA exam on weekends. I spent many hours on, on, on weekends in the library studying for the mm -hmm. CPA exam. So uh, education to me is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about the school budget, I, I, that's a huge factor for me. Education is mm -hmm. truly important to me. Uh, so that's another area where um, you know, experience has been important in, in education and finance. Uh, the next, I guess, area that I want to focus on is, in terms of experience, is 
not only in finance, but also in operations. I used to be an electrician. Uh, I was in a trade for about nine oh. years. So here I am, I have this experience in you know, my early years in the trade, understanding how things work, operations, you know, how does an HVAC system work. I understand the whole process. I've, I've been involved in, in that type of structure. Um, I've actually built houses. Uh, so I've, I've gone from that area in the trade to, to being you know, in finance now. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of a great combination, and it's especially with the job that I'm doing now, where it all comes together and, and seeing everything. Uh, so that's, it's been a great uh, combination of skill sets yeah. that's helped, and I think that that entire skill set that I have uh, has obviously added value to the uh, budget committee yeah. because I hear about the, you know, the cost of this and cost mm -hmm. of this and, yeah. and how does it apply. Uh, so that's, that's important. Uh, let's see, uh, along with experience, I would have to say the final question is why? You know, why do I want to run for a budget committee for another three years? Mm -hmm. And uh, last year I, I ran for the one year uh, term mm -hmm. and the reason I ran for the one year term is because I want to make sure I can make a commitment, a commitment to the mm -hmm. town, right? That I'm, I'm going to spend these the, the, the times and meetings and, oh, and, and, mm -hmm. and working with people. And I, I just want to make sure I had that commitment. I could, I could do the job that I was elected to do. Mm -hmm. and, and I can say with 100% confidence right now that uh, I am fully committed and, and willing to do it another mm -hmm. three years. I was going to say, I agree your council meetings. Yes, yeah. yes, you've yes been there. I've been so there. That's uh, good. So I'm fully committed. And during my last interview, last time I was sitting here, last year in this seat, <laughs> I, I use an analogy, and it's an analogy that I use to, to explain some of the, the type of person I am as a character. And I related to vehicles. I, I mentioned that, you know, to me, vehicles, exp you know, we drive the cars because it's an expression of who we are. Yeah. And I'm not sure if anybody remembers that, but I, I mentioned, but then I brought back, so I'm back to my, and I mentioned my Honda. Pilot. <laughs> That's a 2009 that. Honda Pilot. I'm still oh. driving. It has 245,000 miles <laughs> on it, and and I relate it to me because it's, it has the same characteristics that I that, that reflect who I am. And it's reliability, trustworthy, and dependability, and it's versatile. I mean, I, I can do so many things. And that's how I that's how I view myself and that type of person. And so my closing statement, I guess, I want to use that a very similar analogy, and that's that the, the one year term that I spent in the budget committee to me was was like being a part of an auto assembly line where I was hearing all these budgets, all different mm -hmm. departments coming in and saying this is what, no, our, here's our budget, here's what we're planning on spending. That all coming together to build this overall budget for the school and the town. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to do now is open the hood and, and spend a little more time digging and work with the committee members and understanding what changes can we make to maybe make this, this whole engine more efficient mm -hmm. and, and more productive than it is. So that's what I want to do is open that hood and work more you know, directly with the committee members. And you guys that's have such a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a great analogy. Yeah. And you guys yeah. have such a voice, I mean, because I only see you on the town council side of things, but mm -hmm. you deal with the school too. Correct. And yeah. so that's, you She's bring, you can bring the knowledge from the school and the school board meetings to the town mm -hmm. council and vice versa and kind of mm -hmm. tie it in as a whole. And that's not something, you know, I see on the council side. So it's, mm -hmm. it'd be kind of cool to see what ideas you guys. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's how uh, I, I view it as just, being able to spend a little more time now and, and analyzing. Now I know what's involved. There was always, right. when I first started the budget committee, me, the, the meetings was like, all right, I've got this budget, give me this binder. I'm like, all right, how do I start? What do I, you know, where do I start with this? I did, where is, you know, but now it's, it's a lot better. Now I understand mm -hmm. how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. So now I feel like I can ask the right questions yeah. and the more effectively yeah. ask mm -hmm. questions. Yeah, and that was a great thing, you know, going for the one-year term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. right. You know, yeah. and yeah. seeing if you yeah. wanted yeah. to continue Instead on. of going for a three-year mm -hmm. term, right. yeah. deciding you didn't want to do it and leaving right. an open position. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. yeah. Correct. So yeah. That was a good I, I want to make sure I can make that commitment. I can do it. The, uh, the timing is at 7 o'clock at night. It works for me, so this mm -hmm. is, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so are there any changes, so any other changes within the committee that you, like, besides opening up the hood? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any other changes <laughs> you'd like in terms of kind of informing? Um, I know that Alex was talking about um, making social more media social media presence oh, and I, kind I, of uh, opening up your mm -hmm. ideas to the rest of the residents so that they know what's mm -hmm. going on. That's one of my main things was is, you know, being part of that budget committee was I think we need sort of the, anyone who's new to the budget committee needs mm -hmm. to understand sort of like a refresher or a, a starting point and the budget committee group sits down, they, they go through the process mm -hmm. and say, this is how it works. And, a, and maybe a calendar of, of, you know, here's what to expect in the next mm -hmm. few months and, yeah. and what we're going to be doing. 
Uh, it's sort every of month what's every month up. of what's we coming up, and it, it would ha truly help understand uh, the, the whole process because you know when you look at a budget, understanding you know what what does this mean, what does this mean, some of the terminology, some of the jargon mm -hmm. that we use. That would mm -hmm. so yeah. anyone who's new to the budget committee, that, I think that's very important. It is. It's yeah. very important. Yeah. To inform everyone yeah. About yeah. 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 And I th and it's important. If, you know, if, if somebody who is on the budget committee is new doesn't truly understand all those concepts. Right. How does the town people, you know, the people how in the town, they how do they understand it? They, yeah. they comprehend it exactly yeah. what's yeah. taking place. So, so that's yeah. definitely something like, yeah. from my perspective, from my job too, that I, I, I would like to see more of is a lot of the committees and boards kind of being more social uh, mm -hmm. with the social media, the YouTube, the offering mm -hmm. more opportunities to show people not just their meetings, but how they conduct their meetings, why they make the decisions exactly. they do. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, so mm -hmm. that would it's just be great. my personal yeah. opinion. No, it's true. That's, <laughs> it, that's exactly. It's throwing that out there. More it's, people it's, like involvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Involvement, it's sort of definitely. just setting the guidelines. This is what this is what's yeah. going to happen. This is yep. what we plan on doing. This is yeah. our overall objective and our goal for for us as a mm -hmm. committee member. This mm -hmm. is what we should deliver. And I think that would give yeah. some people more faith in some of the other committees, yeah. and not just Correct. budget committee, but mm -hmm. right. Yeah, give them more faith in what those committees are doing. So. Correct. Yeah. 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 So wonderful. Do, do you have anything else you want to add in terms of? A closing statement. Um, um, I, I think uh, Sherry knows I'm part of the Rotary, mm -hmm. London yeah, Rotary, uh, yeah, involved in the town that way, and uh, it's again that's that's enlightening. It's it, mm -hmm. we realize you, we have uh, um, nonprofits coming in and other areas coming in to, to deliver presentations to us in the Rotary, and we hear about all these situations. There's there's such a need out there, mm -hmm. um, and people don't realize it. And 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 me now on the, uh, being on the part of the budget committee. Now when I see someone standing out in front of Dunkin' Donuts asking, like the, you know, the, the London cheerleaders or somebody out there asking <laughs> for a donation, now I'm, 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 I'm more likely to donate now. I yeah. just find that, you know, now I, I, I see the value that it adds. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, um, so I, I'm, that's, I, I, my view of that is very different now, yeah. how, how people, when they fundraise, how mm -hmm. important it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, we yeah. appreciate you coming on, and thank you. Thank you. We yes. wish you the best of luck on March 10th. And yeah. yes, obviously, um, what time do the polls open? On we March open 10th? at 6 a.m. and close at 8. Oh, yeah. yes. So we extended that hour in the morning because Which the voters wanted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's helped a lot. Yeah. So and we've appreciated yeah, all good. of our candidates that have come on. Yeah. I wasn't here the other night, but the other night and tonight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just giving the people an opportunity to hear mm -hmm. the different voices. Yeah, this is great. Good. This is great. Different candidates' opinions. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone yeah. tuning Thanks. in, we wish you good luck. We mm -hmm. wish all the candidates good luck. And March 10th, get out and vote. March 10th, everyone vote. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, have a good evening.